This video is sponsored by Cricut. Hello, my loves. It's Monica, and today I have a very exciting video. Also, I'm coming at you from a very messy bedroom. Um, I don't know when this video is going up as far as like within my vlog timeline, um, but yes, I am in New York City. I've moved, and I'm currently unpacking my disaster of a bedroom. <laughs> But yeah, I am super excited to share all of this with you guys. But today I am going to be sharing a video that I've actually been working on for weeks and maybe months at this point. And I've been really hyped for this one. So basically, you all know that I love crafting of all forms. I just find it really therapeutic, calming, and just really fun. So I love integrating it into my everyday life as much as I can. And I've been really inspired, I feel like along with a lot of people, with a lot of various TikTok trends. And so I wanted to try and DIY a few of them myself. The first DIY I'm going to be tackling is this bandana dress. And let me tell you, this dress is my new favorite thing. Literally anytime I go anywhere, I get so many compliments on it. And then I get the extra burst of serotonin of being able to say, thanks, I made it. <laughs> I feel like I've just seen a lot of like bandana style dresses on fashion TikTok over the past few seasons and there are a few different shops that actually sell these. I'll link some down below in case you just want to buy one and obviously it's great to support a small business. I think the one that I've seen the most often is by Psychic Outlaw and that's who really inspired my own bandana dress DIY. So yeah, if you want to just buy a bandana dress. I will link them down below. They're a really cool brand. But yeah, I was basically looking for a reason to break out my sewing machine for a while and this seemed like an easy enough DIY for me to dive into. So really all you need for this one are 10 bandanas. I will say if you are straight size, you could just use probably 10 of the same size bandanas. For me, I did end up special ordering two larger bandanas off of Amazon um, for the body pieces. So in total, I had eight like regular size bandanas and then two sort of larger bandanas. And then I went ahead and dyed those and I will let Monica from the past take over from here and share the rest of the DIY. So I've been laying out the bandanas. Obviously this one is like the larger um, bandanas and then I have the smaller ones are going to go on the arms and then on the skirt of like three of these on each side gathered so yeah I just got to go ahead and dye these now as far as dyes these are the colors I got and I'm hoping that I'll be able to achieve this kind of style um I'm hoping that if I just like put a little bit of this stuff in, I can get this like pastel color. We shall see though, but fingers crossed. I've used like less than a tablespoon of this dye. Like I think I used about a teaspoon and it's already super dark. So I'm just gonna try it with one of the cloths and see how that goes. The issue is that the RIT website has like tons of instructions for their other dyes, but not for the powders which is annoying, but yeah, uh, I put some salt in here and some soap because that's, uh, I think that's what you're supposed to do. We'll see. <laughs> so this is where we're at. It's this really pretty lavender color and that's basically what I wanted. So I think I'm gonna take it out. It's only been like a couple seconds. <laughs> Um, but I don't want it to get too dark. I don't know. Mm, I'll leave it for a few more seconds. I'll just keep an eye on it. But yeah, we're looking good. We are now on to bandana number two. This one is not getting as dark. I feel like that other bandana kind of sucked up all the dye. Uh, but hopefully if I leave it here for a little bit, it'll, it'll deepen up. But the other one is looking pretty good. So this is the other one. It's the exact color I was hoping for. Really pretty lavender. The only issue is I don't think I mixed the powder perfectly because there are a few speckles like this. Um, 
but I mean, honestly, I think it's fine. So all of my bandanas are dry and dyed, and I really like the way they all came out. These pink ones I got um, all like previously, they were already colored pink basically. <laughs> um, I Yeah, I like how all of them came out. The orange came out such a nice color. The only one that like didn't come out the way I wanted would be the green, which is like very, very faded. I can't decide if I want to just go ahead and dye them again and make them a bolder green or if I kind of like that it's basically a greenish white mm, you know now that I'm looking at it like this I kind of want this to be green like I want it to be a greener green okay I'm gonna go ahead and dye these and then we'll we will reconvene all right so this is what we're looking at right now I'm thinking about this far in should be good I think I'm just gonna sew it and hope for the best. <laughs> okay, so a couple of things. First of all, sewed my first piece together. Um, obviously you can see my stitch very clearly. Um, I feel like I shouldn't use a zigzag stitch here. Um, uh, <laughs> anyways, this was a mistake, but it's fine. Honestly, I think it's kind of, it kind of is cute. You know, it's like a little design. Well, that's what we'll say. Um, also, my green just came out of the dryer and I like this so much better. I'm so glad that I ended up dyeing it a little bit darker. I feel like it looks amazing with um, the purple especially, but with like all the colors. I feel like all the colors just look really great together. So yeah, I'm going to do or attach my next sleeve, which I believe is green, onto this yellow. I'm going to pin it and then I'm going to sew that section and I'll be right back. All right, got a little bit of an update. I have sewed on these two bits and I'm so excited. Okay, so basically all I have to do now is sew on the back uh, bandana and then I just need to sew like down the side and across the sleeve and then I'll be done with the body part, which I'm very excited for. All right, I did a quick little try on with the back pinned and I think we're looking good. Ooh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so I'm currently um, working on those sleeves and I wanted to point out that one thing that I'm doing, this is a pretty basic sewing technique, is that when I get to the corners, I just put my needle in and then I pop up the presser foot and then I just spin around my project. So that way you don't have to like you know take it out and redo it and do like a new seam each time when you get to a corner so just putting that out there this isn't a very good like tutorial video but i thought i'd throw that tip in just in case so my next step is to basically just sew um, along the sleeves. Uh, I had to turn it inside out for that and I'll just sew along the sleeves and the sides and I'll do it very similar to what I did on these corners where I just turn it. But yeah, oh my gosh, it's coming together <laughs> and I love the colors. Okay, so now that I have the top of the dress done, I'm just really quickly just double checking my skirt and now I'm gonna go ahead and sew these so I'm gonna sew them basically like this um well wrong sides together I think or right sides together I don't know <laughs> uh, I'm really bad at describing what I'm doing but basically I'm just gonna go ahead and sew all the skirt pieces together like this way together and then together here and then I can flip it over and iron it or something like that and then we'll move on to attaching the skirt to the top but okay gonna go ahead and make this giant circle out of these pieces okay so as a little bit of an update yes it is right sides together 
and you really want to make sure that your bottom hem is really nice because we don't want to have to rehem that um, but yeah you just do a straight stitch down and it's super easy this part is going by so so fast all right so <laughs> i now have what is basically a massive infinity scarf so next what i have to do is figure out how to do like one of those running stitches i think that's what it's called where you just do like a thin or a, a long stitch around the whole perimeter and then like pull it in order to gather the skirt i've never done that before so i'm gonna go watch a few youtube tutorials I would recommend, <laughs> if you want to know how to sew it all, please do not use this video. Watch YouTube tutorials and learn from like people who actually can teach how to sew. Uh, I'm just, you know, hoping I can inspire you <laughs> to do some some crafts and to show that like I am a total novice, and if I can do this by just watching a few YouTube videos, so can you. All right. So, all right, I'm gonna go find some YouTube tutorials for how to gather this skirt, and I will be right back. So from what I understand to do the gather, I'm going to have it on the same stitch, longest length, and then here I'm just not going to back stitch. And I believe that is what I need to do. Uh, hopefully this works out. <laughs> Basically all I gotta do now is sew this together. So I'm gonna um, sew them again right sides together. So I'll turn everything inside out and I'm gonna go ahead and do that. And I think then we're done. Oh my gosh. So yeah, basically at this point I attached the skirt to the top and I didn't realize that I didn't document this. <laughs> But it's because that this process, like this part of the DIY was the most frustrating and the thing that I struggled with the most, which was really surprising to me. I thought it was going to be like really easy the whole way through, but nope, I really struggled attaching the top and the skirt. And I think it's because I didn't crop the top. So obviously I didn't keep the full length of the top um, as the bandanas. And like in my mind, I was like, okay, well, I'll just crop it after I attach the skirt. Uh, which was a bad choice. So just crop the shirt where you want it to hit initially and you'll save yourself a lot of headache. But yeah, if you just sew the skirt and the top right sides together, then you will be done and you'll have your very own bandana dress. Um, I recognize that this was kind of a chaotic DIY tutorial, um, but I wanted to be honest about what the process was like actually like for me and honestly like the vast majority of creating this dress was really just like guessing and a few times I had to undo things and redo things so eventually we got there and eventually I had my beautiful bandana dress which I am obsessed with and I really love this dress because you don't have to use bandanas like you could just use old t-shirts or scrap fabric that you have laying around as long as you have like 10 squares of fabric you can make this dress doesn't matter what it is so hopefully that inspires some of you to maybe pick up a sewing machine if you have one and try your hand at making your own dress because I will admit like even though I did struggle at the end this was an incredibly easy DIY project and I think would be such a fantastic one for like beginner sewers because I definitely am a beginner sewer. So project number two is definitely the easiest out of the three and for this one I was inspired by all of the tote bag videos I see on TikTok. I've always been a lover of a good tote bag but I feel like TikTok really took it to the next level and everyone just has all these like really cute aesthetic tote bags and I love all the like fashion videos with them and just like day in my life videos with these girls and their tote bags and I just I wanted a cute tote bag so I had actually a couple of blank tote bags that I decided to add my own design to and for this I used my Cricut Joy and I love the Cricut Joy because it's small portable but also really powerful like I can you could just make so much with it for this one I used some pink um, iron on permanent vinyl that I had and I love this specific vinyl which is the smart vinyl from Cricut because you don't need anything else just the vinyl you can load it straight into the machine um, and I just think that's really awesome it sort of makes it even 
easier to craft the Cricut, believe it or not. And then as for the design, I was inspired by one of my favorite songs from the Evermore album. So I just found a cowboy hat design in the Cricut app and I selected that, had my machine cut it out for me. And then I went into the app and typed out Cowboy Like Me into the app. Um, and I just picked a Western font, had the machine cut that out for me. Super easy, literally less than five minutes. Then I applied it on to my tote bag and used the Easy Press Mini, which is a adorable and basically it just makes it super easy to apply iron on vinyls or anything iron on um, and so I just used that in order to iron on the vinyl that I had and oh my gosh it was so cute I love this tote bag I went to grab her from our entryway but here it is in all its glory it's so cute and I have used this tote bag non-stop and the design has held up so perfectly like it has not budged and i think it's so cute and it also goes so well with the like western vibe of my bandana dress so i'm also a very big fan of that so yeah this was such an easy diy and now i feel like a cool tote bag girl <laughs> So I've definitely noticed on TikTok that there are a lot of polymer clay DIY videos and I love watching every single one and constantly being transfixed by the amazing things that people are able to create with clay and I got really into it actually this spring and I've kept up with playing with polymer polymer clay i really just love it i think it's so fun it's like adult play-doh almost um and it's honestly really gotten me to want to look into like actual pottery courses because i think i just really enjoy it um but yeah i started off by creating a few rings because obviously that has been a really big trend and i feel like these like bobbly rings are such a good place to start with polymer clay because the whole point of them is to look a little bit unfinished, a little bit messy, honestly a little bit ugly. So there is really like zero pressure and they're super easy to make and I think came out really cute. So all I did was, I mean it's really straightforward, I basically just rolled out some clay and fit it to my finger and then I cut out some designs from a little strawberry, a circle so that I could do a smiley face, and a flower. Just cut all those out, attach them together, and then baked them according to my clay's instructions. Every clay has different instructions, so be sure to look at that when you are putting together your own rings. And then once they were out of the oven, all I had to do was paint them with some acrylic paint, let that dry, and then I could go ahead and coat them with some resin. Now. This is where I need to get on my soapbox for a second. Honestly, I almost kind of regret getting the resin or dabbling into resin. I mean, I was really careful with it. I wore PPE on my hands and my face, and I also made sure to use it in a well-ventilated area. I was outdoors, basically, in our like sort of outdoor porch. And I so I felt okay doing that. Um, and I also was able to use a, a gel lamp in order to cure the resin. But to be honest, I would just recommend using like a clear nail polish in order to add shine to your rings um, just because resin is really complicated and it can be really dangerous. Like I get really frustrated when I do watch TikToks or YouTube videos and people are showing themselves using resin and they're not doing any sort of like protective measures or like giving any sort of disclaimer about like how dangerous resin can be because if you inhale that stuff if you get it on your skin like it can cause really bad damage and i think it's really important to know that um it might not happen the first time for some people it does happen the first time so please be careful if you are going to use resin do your research look into like what you should be wearing in order to protect yourself um but i am really happy overall with how the rings came out i think they're so cute and i really just love the way they like spruce up any outfit and how like sort of fun and quirky they are and so that's it those are the three diys that i recently created so now let's check them all out together So 
yeah, I had so much fun making this video and putting together all of these DIYs. I hope that this video could inspire some of you to go out and try out some DIYs that maybe have been on your list, maybe some of these that I featured in my video. If you do try out any of these DIYs, I'd love to see what you create, so be sure to tag me over on Instagram or Twitter. And thank you so much to Cricut for sponsoring this video. Again, I'll have a link down below where you can check them out. And yeah, thank you all so much for watching, and I'll talk to you next time. Bye!